Welcome GPU news to get excited about. NVIDIA has now announced two separate GPUs that we can get excited about that I want to talk about real quickly. One of them was announced today. The other one was announced about a week ago. The RTX A 4500. Nice positioning. We've got enough information there with specs that we can look at. The other one that was just announced today is the RTX 3090 Ti. And that's something that'll make your mouth water. WCCF Tech and Video Cards have both announced the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 Ti and confirmed. And based on the specs, we have enough information we can look at. You know, although we don't have the published specs yet from NVIDIA, we know enough that I want to include these two in this information about something for a shadow of things to come. Now, if you're like the rest of us and you've had trouble getting your hands on a GPU, period, okay, I'm excited about that, but uh, can't build a machine without a GPU. But we've got some other stuff we're going to be doing with Thunderbolt that I'm looking forward to. Video Cards is reporting that this is going to use a 21 gigabit GDDR6. The RTX 3090 Ti is supposed to feature the GA102 GPU. Hold that thought. And they're looking at January. The wattage has me concerned 450 watts, which makes the other card, the professional card, look even more enticing. But I wanted to cover this one first. Over 10,000 CUDA cores, 24 gigs, and to reiterate, 450 watts. Well, I don't know about you, but that makes my head spin thinking about a GPU, 450 watts. I mean, it wasn't too long ago, what, 10 years ago, we were building computers. We had 500 watt power supplies for the whole thing. And now we've got to have 450 watts just for the GPU. And that does not include the next generation, which are going to require more power than that. But I digress. And they're talking a release date of January. I appreciate charts like this, and this is on video cards. We'll have this link in the description. And the other link into WCCF Tech, pretty much the same thing. Again, this was just released as of today, probably about six hours ago. But this was not my main focus, but I wanted to include this today in case you weren't aware of it. The card I want to spend the most time on is the one that I think is probably going to be the most applicable to the most amount of people, whether they're building a uh, TRX 40 or a WRX 80. And we've got another subscriber that's asked a question about TRX 40 or WRX 80. So I'm trying to think how to present the information to you guys because he's already built a TRX 40, but now he's contemplating building WRX 80 because in that machine right now he has two RTX 5000 GPUs, not the A, but the 5000 series. So it's a, it's a bit of a conundrum how I want to present that to you guys because even though he has it working, I'll save that for the separate video because I think it's fascinating what some of you guys are doing. And a lot of what we all want to do, like for example, those of us that are storage junkies, it's about needs versus wants and uh, making that all work out. My focus is on the NVIDIA RTX 84500 and this is information straight from NVIDIA because they now have the specs published. And this information was first made available probably about a week ago by the time you see it. So I'm going to go to specifications, 20 gigs. Contrast that with 24 gigs. 200 watts power. That's a whole lot friendlier, 200 watts worth of power. That means like for the system we built, which is the Gigabyte TRX 40 designator, we have a super flower power supply in here, 1300 watts. Plenty to cover, whatever we need to do, upgrade, whatever whether we've got a uh, RTX 2080 Ti or whether we have an RTX 3080 or whether we do something like a, uh, yeah, like this. PCI Express 4.0, 16 lane slot, and this is a dual slot GPU. We didn't realize what an issue slot width on the GPU was going to be until we got into this when we got delivery on the uh, 3080 and realized that our 16 lane slot, we had a problem with the 8 lane slot. We didn't have space with a 16 lane slot because of the width of the GPU. So all of our testing, most of all of our testing, so we have access to all four slots, which are two 16 lane slots and two 8 lane slots, is using a two slot RTX 2080 Ti. Now, if we can get a two slot wide GPU on the professional side, man, what a difference. One of the nice things about this particular card, we had the ability with the edge connector in the RTX 2080 Ti series that you could bridge two of these. And that became an issue when people started talking about using multiple GPUs and being able to bridge them. And that's something that's an exciting feature about the RTX A4500. It's not built on the RTX A4000. It's built 
it looks like in the architecture or the RTX A5000. So for what you get, I think it looks like a pretty good medium in between price wise and specs. It'll work with a two slot and a three slot bridge. And it should also work with a four slot bridge. And that's significant when you're talking about a consumer card versus a professional card. Because a professional card like this, um, again, I had a subscriber ask this question about the bridges. And I can tell you and show you book and verse on what NVIDIA and PNY says. But there's a link into Puget that talks about what will work and what won't work. And suffice to say, on the uh, RTX 2080 Ti, uh, accordingly, and I have the bridges for those, we did a video about it. That bridge that works on the consumer card will work on the professional card on the RTX 5000 series. But when you go to the pro card, such as the RTX uh, 3080, no bridge. So you've got to go to an RTX 3090. Okay, I expect this RTX 3090 Ti to be able to accept a bridge, which in the case of like this system, because we have two 16 lane slots, we have one subscriber that I will uh, share with you more in another video that has a 16 lane slot and an 8 lane slot and he has his two RTX 5000 GPUs accordingly. A 16 lane slot, an 8 lane slot and he's used a 3 slot bridge. So if you look at how the bridges work, if you'll see here, follow my screwdriver down right here to the edge, you'll see one, two, three. So that measures out as a 3 slot bridge. To use a four slot bridge to get from the 16 lane slot, you have to use the consumer bridge. And again, we've shown that. So what he has done, at this subscriber, and I'm kind of getting off topic for a second. He has two RTX 5000 GPUs, a 16 lane slot and an eight lane slot. He wants those in two 16 lane slots. If he keeps it in his TRX 40, and by the way, he built the Gigabyte TRX 40 because he wanted Thunderbolt 3. Then if Thunderbolt 3 is a priority, then on both platforms, the TRX 40 and the WRX 80, it's going to be Gigabyte. Now, we've talked about the ASRock motherboard that's going to be coming out in the ATX format. When that's coming out, all we have are preliminary specs. That too is going to be Thunderbolt. My expectation is Thunderbolt 3, but it could be Thunderbolt 4. We don't know. All it says is one Thunderbolt header. And because ASRock uses the 5-pin header for Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4, we don't know. They didn't specify. So as it relates to this machine, because he wants Thunderbolt, to reiterate, if he's going to be in two 16-lane slots, he needs a four-slot bridge. He's got it working right now with a three-slot bridge. But he's thinking about taking those two GPUs and transferring it over to the other machine, which means building a WRX80. Why? Because he needs three 16-lane slots. Why? Well, it goes back to needs versus wants. The applications he's mentioned, he's told me three, two of them use the CPU for rendering. The third one uses one GPU for rendering. So I think the uh, issue with GPUs is more about want than it is a need. However, we're just trying to figure out how to make it work. So if he wants to take those two GPUs and put those two GPUs in a 16 lane slot each, and if he wants to have the quad card running, which absolutely has to have a 16 lane slot because bifurcation for those has to be in the BIOS, then he's got to have three 16 lane slots. Okay, the only way to get that was with the WRX80. So we're probably going to do a video about building a TRX40 versus building a WRX80 because we have a, another RAID solution we're going to be sharing with you in another video, a little off topic, but not totally, that will make a whole lot of sense from seeing this when I share that with you, that I'll just say uses a GPU to manage the RAID it's, it's wicked. I'm eager to tell you about it, but i got to save it for a separate video. That uh, even though it could be used in a TRX40, that needs to be on a WRX80. So there's a lot of stuff going on that I'm eager to share with you, but it's important to share this with you right now. Because for those that don't like or, or that do like what the RTX A4000 has to offer, but yet are really have your mouth watering about what the RTX A5000 can do, but don't like the price. I think the one in the middle, the RTX A4500, because of the two things you can do with the A5000 that you can't do with the A4000, the bridge, and also you can sync the cards if you choose to do that. And I think that's a big deal. Some of this information is a little hard to uh, pull out because it is so uh, interrelated. 
but I got to tell you, it's pretty exciting. And I'll also have a link up in the video cards where they talk about the NVIDIA preparing for the RTX 8500 workstation card. Again, two slots wide. And if we look here at the GPU that's being used, on the RTX A4500, the GA102GL versus the GA102-350 on the RTX 3090 Ti. And something else I had not noticed as I'm looking down here in the fine print, this is going to have a motherboard-specific sensor info for the Z690 on the ASUS and the Z690 on Gigabyte for that 16-core CPU. I'm curious about that. Now, even though the RTX 3090 Ti is going to have 10,000 CUDA cores, and yes, it's got more CUDA cores, it's also going to require more power. According to the specs that have been leaked, instead of 10,000 CUDA cores on the uh, RTX A4500, we're going to have a little over 7,000 CUDA cores. My expectation, that GPU is probably going to be right in the middle price-wise, so you're probably looking at around $2,000 for that GPU. Uh, What's it going to be for the uh, RTX 3090 Ti? I have no idea. You know, trying to find an RTX anything right now is uh, scarce as hen's teeth. But because I've known about this, I'm glad I waited. Because when this came out today, I want to include this on these two GPUs. I also ran a quick search on a PC Part Picker looking for GPUs. And the only parts that they have listed that we are talking about are an A4000 and an A6000. They don't even show the A5000 in the list. And I was really surprised about that. So looking at the spread of 1645 to 5000, I would expect we're probably looking, based on the 5000 being right at 3, I would expect the RTX A4500 to be right at about $2,000. But I had to share that with you. Now on B&H... I have a link that takes us up into graphics display cards, and I'm going to select. So for those that want to do a comparison, I'm going to show you how to pull this up because it's not saving as a bookmark. But I'm going to show a comparison for the RTX A6000, an RTX A4000, and an RTX A5000. And the RTX A5000 looked really good at that price, but if it's not available, it's not available. But if the RTX A4500 comes in at $2,000 with uh, just a little bit lower CUDA cores and 20 gigs of video RAM instead of 24 gigs, I'm, I'm eager. I'm excited. I'm interested. So we'll compare these items. I think that link will stick, so I'll have that up in the B&H. A6000, A4000, and A5000. So for those of you that want to compare, just based on the specs, and these are all PCI Express 4.0. 16 gigs, 24 gigs, and 48 gigs, and the other one we're talking about blows my mind when you think about it. But 20 gigs for a GPU, which puts us right in between specs-wise and price-wise, to reiterate, of the A5000 and the A4000. So an A4500 looks like something that's uh, probably going to be bang for the buck. Again, it's just a matter of getting our hands on one. So, And again, probably after the first of the year. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this. My name is Gil Boyd. This is Builder Bio. I want to thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you next video. We're out.